Hi, this is Mark Gutkowski in Palm Springs, California, and uh, I have a mask that I created and I posted it on Facebook today and I got quite a few inquiries into whether there's a template that I was using and also just the process for making one. So I thought I'd do a quick video on how I created this particular mask. I had looked at a variety of different patterns that were online and um, I didn't like the way they fit my face. I, I wanted something that came underneath the chin as well as went over the nose. So that's how I came up with this design. I have put the template on my website. It's markgps.com. So when you go to the front page, it will be on the left-hand side of the sidebar. So feel free to download that PDF and you can print it out. There are two designs there. There's the Mark and the Marco. Uh, the Mark design is my mask and I have a larger face. So if you have a bigger frame, this will probably work well for you. The Marco is for my husband. He's a, he's a little bit thinner than I am and I hate him for it. But nonetheless, he is able to wear a smaller mask. So uh, you can choose between the two of those and then you can adapt them as time goes on. I, I made several different prototypes before I got the one that really fit my face first. Okay, well, let's go take a look. Again, markgps.com is where you can get the template that we're gonna be working with. All right, well, we're gonna use a t-shirt to do this particular mask. You can actually use a dress shirt. Uh, I know a lot of you are probably working on your closet. So what you're gonna do is, is find a fabric that's 100% cotton because that's going to do a better job uh, than something that has a, a, a polyester mix in it. But whichever shirt you're going to use, um, what you're going to do is you're going to take the shirt and you're going to turn it inside out. And the reason for that is when we use the pattern, we're going to start sewing the way we cut it out. And when we do that, we're going to end up flipping it inside out. And then the outside of the t-shirt, the fabric that's the part that you usually see is going to end up on the outside of the mask. And you can see it's slightly darker in this particular case. Inside, a little bit lighter, that's going to be on the inside. You're not actually going to see it. Um, so what I'm going to do is, this had a pattern on it, which goes down to about here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work from the bottom up on this shirt doing two masks. I'm just going to cut out the one, but I could potentially make two masks out of this one shirt. So this pattern is available at markgps.com. This is the mark pattern. It's for a slightly larger face. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trace it out on the shirt. Now I'm just using a regular piece of chalk because this is a dark shirt. If you have a light shirt, um, I use a Sharpie. <laughs> I think that there are probably better tools for this, but I'm not actually that much of a sewer. I know how to use a sewing machine um, well enough to make this work. And the t-shirt fabric is uh, a lot more forgiving, so that's gonna work out really well. But the key here is just to make sure that you've got the outside of this uh, done so that you can see it when you're doing the cutting, but also you don't want the fabric to move around that much. You wanna make sure it's as precise as possible because you're gonna be matching up two of these to each other to create the full mask. So what I'm doing is I'm tracing it out first uh, face up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to go the opposite way. And right now I'll put it here so that we have a reverse of the pattern. Now, another thing I'm doing is fabric has a bias in it. It has, it has the fabric is, is all done in one direction. So if you make sure that both of the pieces are done in the same grain as the fabric, it'll make it a little bit easier to sew. That's about the the most I know about sewing with fabric. But again, I'm gonna go through and just quickly sketch this out. Okay, once I've got that done, I'll go ahead and put my pattern aside and I'm just going to cut this out. So literally I'm going to follow the inside line that was covered by the pattern and do this as precisely as possible because again, these are, these are mirror images of each other and I wanna make sure that they fit together as snugly as possible. This lower part's where the chin is going to go, and this upper curve here is what's going to snug around the nose in the final piece, uh, in the final production of the mask. Okay, that's going to leave us with the two mirror image pieces. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we are going to be pinning the long edge, which is going to be from the crest of the nose to the chin, together on both of these items. And we, we still have the outside of the t-shirt 
folded inside. We haven't done anything to change the way that these are oriented. All we did is cut them out and now we'll pin along the edges so that we can sew. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've, I've sewn these so that they have a quarter of inch, a, a stitch a quarter inch away from the edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first one of these, and it doesn't matter which order you do these in, but the first one I'm going to turn, or I'm going to stretch out so the, the outside seam is against the, the hard surface, and the what will eventually be the outside of the mask is facing up to me. That's going to be the one that has the nice seam, because when you put it on, you want to see the nice seam. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other side, uh, which has also been sewn, I'm going to open it up. Now this one, I want to see the seam coming towards me, because what we're going to do is we're going to sew this up like a kind of like a sock, if you will, and we want all the bad seams on the outside because then we're going to pull it inside out. So the, the nice thing about this is the design, I put this little hook in it here. This is actually, well, we'll see how that works later. But what it does is it helps you figure out how to line these up so that you've got them going the correct direction. So again, we have the outside seam on the back and we have the outside seam on the front. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to pin both of these together. And the key is we want them to line up. So we wanna make sure that the seam for both of these is correctly lined up right here, right in the center. So once I get that set up, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a pin in here to sort of keep me lined up. And then, like I had mentioned before, the fabric kind of uh, will, it doesn't always line up immediately. So what you wanna do is kind of take the two corners of the mask, give it a little stretch so that they're all lined up and that the top and the bottom piece are also on the same line along here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and pin that. And we're gonna work this side and then we're going to work that side and we're just gonna keep working our way around. All right, once I'm done pinning the entire top part, so this is the smaller part where the nose is, uh, I'm now going to do the chin side. So it's the same routine again. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the fabric is lined up so that the two seams are perfectly aligned. And then I'm going to put a pin in just to the left-hand side of the seam to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna do just like I did on the other side, I'm gonna make sure that this fabric is perfectly aligned along the edges. Because the key to this is really making sure that since both patterns are the exact same size, if they're lined up correctly, whenever you're done and you've turned it inside out, it should align very nicely. And I'm just going to pin this again. In this particular case, it's it's came apart. So I'm going to realign it again. And you may have to do this a couple times just to make sure that it lines up correctly. Okay, so I went ahead and I sewed the top and the bottom together. There's a, a little bit of a trick that I forgot to mention, which is the seaming is on the outside, on both the back and the front. And what you may want to do when you're sewing is make sure that the seam is going to the same, going to one side and going to the other, so that they're not, I mean, you can choose to do it so that they both go the same way, but then it makes a big knot for you to sew through with your sewing machine. If you make sure that the flaps go opposite directions, uh, it will make it easier to sew over it. And if you make sure that the knot at both the top and the bottom are going either to the right or to the left, then it's also going to kind of reverse it and, and lay better within the material. All right, so our next step is going to be to turn this inside out. Now, there's not a lot of space here. I can basically stick my finger in here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to pull this through like this, and then um, basically put one finger on my index finger and push the material through and then grab it. All right, so once it's inside out, then the next thing that we're going to do is just sort of stretch out all the little corners so that it is 
fully extended all the way to the seams. And because we had all of the, uh, all the seams exposed before, now that we've turned it inside out, it doesn't, they don't show. It's nice and, nice and put together. Okay, so basically it's kind of like a long tube, but as you can see, it is starting to look a lot like the original mask that we were dealing with. Now, the next part of this is that we need to create the ear component of this, the, the pieces that slip over the ears. Now, what I do is I have, um, these are hair scrunchies. I don't actually have hair that requires a hair scrunchie, but I went and got these at the store a while back. Um, if you have elastic or even if you have to, you just use something like a shoelace, you could use that as well. But in this case, what we're gonna do is, uh, these scrunchies have a little place where there's a rubber connector and the rest is sort of a fabric. And we are going to separate those. And then what this is gonna become is, it's gonna get sewn into the bottom and the top of this and create what we see in the original one. Now, of course, what that means is that um, we need to kind of feed this back in so that it's inside and then we're gonna put these in here. Now, since I already have one of these done, I kind of know where this is going as far as um, how far back I'm gonna be rolling this in before I put in the hair scrunchie or the elastic piece. Uh, but this is also a critical place where when you're making this for yourself, you may wanna hold this up to your face because wherever, this is the top part where the nose goes. And as it gets closer and closer to the ears, depending on your face, you may want to roll this back in a little bit more. So for me, I'm going to actually take off a little bit of this because it's a little bit long for me. So I'm just going to snip off a little and I'll do the same down here. So that they're about the same size. Put that aside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these in just a little bit. Now again, where this is going to be is really dependent on your ear. So I do suggest you put it up against your face and find out you want to have that about a quarter of an inch away from the beginning of your ear. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in this piece here. on the upper inside. So I am going to kind of take a little bit here, put it into this opening, and just kind of thumb it up to the top. Now, right now there is about an inch in there. I probably only need about three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna pull a little bit out. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pin and put it along here to keep that in place for now. The next thing I'm going to do is put the other side in, pinch it down again. Now it doesn't go all the way along this edge, but I'm going to pinch it down. And it's, it's kind of in the middle. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in here. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, and then I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch along the outside seam here so that we have the final sew for both sides. Okay, well, once you get those on, then your mask is complete. Uh, I think one of the things to remember about the mask situation is that when you are working with the pattern um, and you come up with your final mask, which will fit inside of that pattern, if it's not fitting your chin correctly or your nose correctly, you can take some of the, the volume off the pattern, which will also adjust your mask. So. As you put it on your face, if you're noticing that you'd like to have it come in a little bit where your mouth is located, or perhaps it's not quite working with your chin that well, or even you feel like it needs to be closer up because your ear is smaller, if you need to do that, then what you can do is you can make the adjustment by folding your mask, kind of take a look at your pattern, and you can make the pattern a little bit shorter. You're always going to be sewing a quarter of an inch close to the edge, so that will basically be your guide. Um, another thing is you can use any kind of color that you'd like. I made that one for my mom. Uh, you can also use uh, 
This is from a dress shirt that uh, no longer fits me. So there are a bunch of different options and I hope that these work out for you. And again, the, uh, the N95 is actually the preferred uh, type of mask to use, but uh, this will at least make it so that if you're coughing or sneezing, you're not really giving it out to anybody else. Um, so good luck and stay safe and be sure to wash your hands.